Hello and welcome back to X-Plane 11 everybody and today I'm going to be checking out what I believe is a must have add on for the simulator and in the developer's words this will help you adjust and fix many aspects of the X-Plane simulation experience. The tweaking options cover performance and environment enhancement. It's called Fly Edgy, it's a free plugin. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's check out some of the features of this cool little program. And down the bottom right hand corner here, once you've installed it, you'll get this little prompt, tweak utility options. You just click on that and there goes the menu. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different options here that you can go ahead and adjust. Some of them will affect performance and um, quality. Some of them are just to help you go into the settings menu easily, do uh, other things within the aircraft. So the catalyst for me finding this program was that I was getting a little bit annoyed with if I just pan around right here. You can see the shadows in the aircraft right here and you can see that they're quite jagged. And that was really annoying me. So I started searching for how you get rid of those and I stumbled across this program. So let's look at that particular issue right now. So shadow options right here, I click on that. And it comes up with a bunch of different uh, variables that you're able to change but to change your cockpit shadows right here quality is one I just click that twice or as many times as I like and I'm going to go to quality three I found that's quite a good balance between performance and quality and look at that look at those shadows quite sharp now and there I haven't got those jagged lines so really easy you know I can go ahead and just save and close the menu and we are done and dusted that's how I do it Otherwise, you could keep the menu open depending on what you wanted to do. So that's one really cool little feature to make it really easy to uh, get nice clean shadows. Now, a couple other things within the aircraft that are quite handy are the auto barrow off. So, oh, sorry, the auto barrow is off at the moment. But if I put auto barrow on, it will automatically adjust my barometric pressure right down here. So let me just, I'm gonna adjust it. You watch this, I adjust it. And because auto barrow's on, just wait a few seconds and it will automatically, there it goes right there, it automatically adjusted to the current barometric pressure or Q and H depending on what you're using. So that's quite a handy little feature. It means you don't have to go ahead and manually do that. I'll turn it off cause I quite like to tune in it myself. Also, also auto gyro, you can leave that to on too and you don't get that annoying pop-up message. Of course you can press key D to get rid of that also. But some nice little features there just to make life easier when you're in the aircraft. Now if you're flying a dual tanked aircraft, fuel tanked aircraft like this Piper Navajo, and I'll try to keep this menu up so you can still see the fuel, se fuel selector over here. So generally when you're in flight you, you've got to keep changing from left to right tanks just to keep the aircraft balance well you can put that to on and that will automatically do it in the just flight model it actually has that option in there also uh, over here aircraft persistent that just means that uh, whatever state whether it's cold and dark running whatever it might be whatever you left your aircraft in it will then reload the aircraft again in that exactly uh, exact same state so nice and easy there so the other thing that you can do is if I just pop outside the aircraft here, I'm just trying to keep the menu up. Obviously, you probably close it in between. But you can see in the background there, I've got some static aircraft sitting in the airport. Once again, here it goes right here. I can just go click on and off. I've clicked them off and there they go. They disappeared. I click on and wait a few seconds and boom, there they go. Now, the this is the quantity. So if I want to have more, I add that like that. It's thinking about it and it will... Um, around the airport it will put as many aircraft in there that it can fit obviously if I don't want quite as many boom 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 oh, well, let's put it down to the lowest value I've just got the jet there now and just the one aircraft over here so you can just the amount of static aircraft that you have sitting around the airport so that's quite handy let me just turn those off in the meantime now every time that you adjust one of these quality or performance settings you might notice up in the top left hand corner uh, my frames per second at the moment 26 pretty low um, but you adjust some of these options and you'll be able to monitor what your frame rate is doing so you can go ahead and uh, you know mildly tweak things just to try to get that balance between performance and quality which we're always trying to do now the next thing i want to check out is the sounds now what this has is a bunch of different sound options and here they are over here you click on that hopefully you can see what I'm doing right here 
And essentially what you can do, you can increase the intensity and type of wind sounds, rain, so you can have really heavy rain uh, sound coming on top of your aircraft and things like that, rattles, all that sort of stuff. You can adjust the pitch, the, the you can adjust the volume. There's a whole whole range of different options right there. Now I'm ripping through this pretty quickly, uh, but what I would highly recommend you do is download the program. It's uh, I'll put a link down in the description, and then you can just play around with it yourself. It's really easy to set up. Once it's in your menu, it's uh, in your plugins menu. Very very easy. So the next thing that I'll do, see up the top left hand corner you've got frames per second which I mentioned before. Well at the moment I've got that turned off which means when I close this menu after a few seconds frames will be gone. But I can turn that on and um, it will um, continue to show frames per second up in the top left hand corner. Now of course you can do that through your data output screen uh, or options in Flight Sim if you want to. The other thing this allows you to do is uh, go into your weight and balance menu really easily and change those options on here instead of having to go into the menu I meant, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right here flight configuration so you can easily click that and go into your flight configuration. Uh, you, it's got shortcuts through to the controller which is around here somewhere. Uh, it's around here. This is outstanding organization by me. Uh, where is it? You'll all be looking at it, pointing at it. There it is. Here it is right here. Controller calibration right here. So you can go ahead and change that uh, if you want to. In the bottom left hand corner you press simulator settings and it brings up the actual, um, the actual calibration right there. Okay, so let's go back into the menu. Right, let's jump out a little bit further out and I'll show you a couple more options. Okay, uh, as you may have noticed in my flight configuration, I'm here in NZWN, which is Wellington International Airport in New Zealand. I'm on completely default scenery here, apart from some runway enhancements and stuff. But if you take a look at this road right here and we bring up our tweak utility options, I'll just move it around so you can see the road. And if I go ahead and turn road traffic on, there we go, wait for a few seconds. And there you go, I think you can see in the background there's a vehicle right there. And in the background, uh, higher up in the screen there you can see vehicles. So you can turn those vehicles on and off. Now, I'm not too sure, let's see, frames are at the moment are 30. Uh, let's turn, so, and I've only got uh, two out of five from the quantity of traffic, so it's not a lot. How about we put that right up? I'm not too sure whether that's going to make much of a difference to frames. No, it doesn't. Let's put it down. I didn't think it would. So that's one other thing you can easily tweak within, the, within this menu. Now let's go and check out some of the water features which definitely have a big impact on frames. Okay everybody, uh, I've still got my traffic by the looks of it down the bottom left. I can see it's still going away. So uh, how about we turn that off? Okay, right here we've got frames per second of 31. Not amazing up the top left hand corner here. But one of the things within the sim, as most sims do, if you adjust the water options, you have quite a big impact. So if we go to water options right here, and at the moment, advanced water is on, and that will bring up all these options under here, so allow to really finely tune what's happening from a water effect point of view. Now, one basic way of having a massive impact is, see this right here, water effects are on. You can just turn them off. And look at that, straight away I'm up to 47 frames per second. Once again, nothing unbelievable, but still way, way better. Another 20 frames I've gained right there. Now obviously you're just going to get the basic water effects. It's not terrible actually, if you look around, you've just got the clouds reflecting off there. Um, in this menu too, you can change what's happening with the reflections, so you can turn those up and down, and that will have an impact on frames also. So if I turn the water effects back on right there, and you can see the frames right there, they're down to, oh sorry I keep bumping that, 33, 34. So uh, still acceptable but um, obviously has a massive impact. Now another thing you can do is go to auto water and turn it on and you can set the altitude in which you want those actual effects to show. So you might just say hey look once I'm down quite low at 2000 feet then I'll um, turn that on and that way when I'm a bit higher it's not having as much of an issue uh, from a performance point of view on my system. So you could go ahead and adjust that. You could maybe say, maybe you don't want them to come on until, um, you may, maybe you've got a more powerful system and you want them to come on at a higher altitude. Completely up to you. Turn that on or off. So I'll leave water effects on. I've got water auto water off. I could um, change uh, the advanced features and turn those off and it takes away the options, but I'll leave those on for a future time. 
So as, as you scan through some of these options, you'll see there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do. You can change your oxygen options within your aircraft, um, a whole lot of other stuff. But what I'm going to do now, guys, just to finish off the video, I'm going to show you the bird strike simulation. So this is basically what you can do is set up a bird strike within the simulator and um, you can have random bird strikes uh, occurring when you're when you're flying. Not a good thing in real life but maybe just a little bit of fun uh, in the simulation. So let's get an aircraft up in the air and see what happens. Okay here we are everybody climbing out of Wellington about to simulate a bird strike. We're a little bit slow uh, but let's get the options up. Uh, bird strikes are over here so I go to bird strikes. Now what you can do is uh, once you've got the menu up you can adjust all the options and have an interval between when the bird strikes uh, will occur the percentage of them likely to happen so for example if you put a hundred which I've set it to now then it's definitely going to happen uh, or you could have it like one percent of the time or whatever so I'm going to go ahead let's straighten up this aircraft let's get a bit of speed and let's turn bird strikes on and see what happens boom here goes the birds They've gone through and oh no! The bird strike! Oh no! We're on fire! It's not looking good ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! So we're going to have to make our way back to the airport but as you can see those birds had <laughs> quite a large impact. And I am cooking inside right there ladies and gentlemen. Oh no! But uh, just a little bit of fun that you can also have with this, uh, with this plug-in. Ha! <laughs> it's not looking good for me ladies and gentlemen. So there you go everybody, the Fly AG X-Plane Performance and Quality plugin, an absolute must have in my opinion, really easy to use and as you can see a depth of things that you're going to be able to tweak within your simulator to have it running exactly how you'd like to have it run. So go ahead and download it, the link's down in the description. I want to say a huge thank you very much for watching, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe if you are new and until next time everybody, take it easy.